Hey, I'm Cece Summers, and welcome to Something's Wrong with Sunny Day Jack. This is a demo that you can get on Steam for free right now. I literally know absolutely nothing about it, other than I think it's set in the 80s, which is A-OK -okay with me. So let's stop talking about it and get into it. Where am I? I don't mean to be rude, but... I don't remember seeing a face like yours before. Come to think of it, it's been a while since I've seen anyone at all. I haven't slept in ages. But you... I don't know you. I don't think this is a dream this time. I think... You're real, right? It's okay. You don't need to be scared. I'm sure that you and I will become fast friends soon enough. But where are my manners? I don't believe I've even caught your name. You do have one, don't you? Uh, so far I am thoroughly creeped out. <laughs> Okay. Cece? Is that right? Indeed it is. <laughs> yes. It's nice to meet you, Cece. You don't know what it's been like for me in there. It's been hell. Ha <laughs> ha. For a second there. I almost thought God had abandoned me. I'm sure it was all one big mistake. We all make mistakes, even at the best of times. All that matters now is that I have a new friend. Yep, we're friends. Please don't eat me. And we could spend the rest of forever doing all sorts of fun things together. And we never have to be lonely ever again. It's so cold. don't like it. For as long as I can remember, I've never really been the type of person to go out of their way to relive my childhood. I mean, I had a fine one, I guess, but it really wasn't anything special, and being an adult has its own perks, too. Driving cars and having your own money is pretty nice. I don't think I'd trade it for homework and not being able to open childproof caps. These days, a lot of my friends are having kids or spending their money on nostalgic things. That's fine for them, I guess. But I don't usually tend to do that kind of thing. I don't make that kind of cash to be able to do that anyway. I like to think I was pretty mature for that reason. At least compared to some people. supposed to say birthday boy but they just painted boy <laughs> but hey you know what I have a mortgage I pay my bills I'm an adult too judgy McJudgerson there's one exception though or I guess there was one and I keep looking now but you still I don't want to, I do. 
But we're not gonna. Yellow. You remember when we were kids? You'd be the one to ask my mom if I could sleep over at your place. Because I was too scared to do it myself. You'll never know how much that meant to me. How much you mean to me. I was the one that made that hard to believe, wasn't I? I'm gonna fix us, but there's no us without you. And I need you. I'm sorry every day. And I'll be sorry every day of my life. I can't do it without you. Answer me. Please, if you can hear me, answer me. I love you. But what did you do to me? I should know better than to hang on to the past. Nostalgic comforts, they never last. And even if it looks the same, it never is. So best to just grow up and move forward. Be strong enough so that when things do change, you're not leaning on them and you can support yourself. I won't lie. I've been eager to discard these childish things from my life. Almost recklessly so. Maybe that's why I am where I am today. Haunted by the ambassador of things past. Things simple and colorful and childish. Maybe that's why I'm being haunted by a children's TV show host. Good morning, sunshine. The earth says hello. It's time to get up now. Sun's high in the sky, and we wouldn't want to miss out on such a beautiful day, would we? Of course not. I feel him. I feel his weight in the mattress and how the blankets tuck beneath his weight. I don't even need to turn to look. I just know he's there. Hey now, sleep is good for you, but too much of anything, even sleep, can be bad too. Come on, let's get going. He's a ghost? <laughs> he's nudging me gently. The feral sleep-deprived part of my mind is telling me to shove him over the side of the bed. But something about how gentle he's pestering makes me feel bad enough about that thought to put it aside. I throw the blankets over my head and tuck into my cocoon deeper. Come on, Jack, not today. It's Saturday. Saturdays are for sleeping in. I feel him shift slightly, maybe even a little closer. Saturdays can be for lots of other things too, though. Like walks in the park, or trips to the museum, oh, or even... Breakfast pancakes? Are you making me breakfast pancakes, Jack? Or am I going to have to make them because you're a ghost and non-corporeal? Well then. I have to admit, that's a new one. An intriguing one, too. Pancakes? Pancakes. What kind? Blueberry's my specialty, but I can't make them from bed. <laughs> I love blueberry pancakes. This fucker. Curse my incurable laziness and insatiable hunger for foods that require actual cooking. It compels me to get out of bed. Hello, sir. You look very 80s. I sit up and open my eyes. Sure enough, there he is. In all his primary colored glory, it's Jack. Or, I guess his full name is Sunny Day Jack? Although I'm pretty sure his first name is Jack. Maybe it's more of an honorary title. All right, all right, but tell me this. Since when do you make pancakes? Well, I've never not been able to. So you can actually cook? I'm not bad. Is he gonna possess my body and then make me make pancakes? No. 
He smiles coolly, yet warmly. It's a mature and gentle confidence. I feel my stomach full with butterflies. I haven't felt this happy from being paid attention to from a look since that one camp counselor I had a crush on when I was 12. This man thing? I don't know what to call him. He's a strange anomaly to be sure. I can touch him, see him, hear, and feel him. He has a clown belt buckle. I hate it. <laughs> He's as real to me as anyone else, and I notice the morning sun even catches in his hair, like he's as real as I am. And yet, I'm really not sure he is. It all started a few months ago. 84 incident. I'd been looking for clothes at the local thrift shop. You know, as one does when their wardrobe consists of 75% stolen and borrowed shirts from their ex. <laughs> and they're too much of a tightwad to shop for new clothes in an actual new clothes store. There hadn't been very many quality items on the racks, but while I was there, I decided to pick through the messy shelves in the back. You know, the ones filled with ceramic frogs, old alarm clocks, and bags of puzzle pieces. I wasn't really seeing anything that caught my attention. And that wasn't abnormal. I got a few funny pictures from my socials and I was content to consider that my entertainment value for the whole trip. Somewhere in my picking and pulling, something must have happened. I remember knocking over a pile of loosely stacked items, sure, but I don't remember the tape falling into my basket. I just remember showing up to the counter, seeing the employee pulling it out and ringing it up, wanting to object and yet being too nervous to really stop them. It was only like a quarter anyways, not really worth the fuss. When I pulled it out later, it looked like your average home movie, black VHS tape with cracked plastic, just a piece of tape with 84 incident written on the front and faded marker. It could have made for a decent horror movie prop. At the time I was holding onto some belongings of a friend. He was a big enough nerd and had a VCR. Who has a VCR nowadays? I don't even know if you would be able to buy one. Even like online, I feel like you would have to go to like the depths of eBay to find a VCR. <laughs> Before I threw it away, I figured I would see what was on it at least. Like I said though, that was a few months ago. I don't remember what was on that tape. I must have been really tired or something because I blacked out. Yep, I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> I can't remember anything about it, and the tape doesn't seem to work anymore. But since I woke up that one day, Sunny Day Jack has just been here. From what I've been able to glean, he's connected to the tape. He often references his friends, the Sunny Time crew. A few times I was tempted to think a crazed man had just come into my apartment and started living here. But then I made a few observations that led me to believe maybe, just maybe, I was going insane. <laughs> I like how that wasn't our first assumption. Like we watched a, a, a tape blacked out and all of a sudden this 80s host of a TV show is just living in our house now. No explanation, we're just like, I mean, nothing out of the, out of the ordinary, I think. Maybe I'm crazy, probably not though. They were having me do a lot of unpaid overtime. So it was a logical conclusion at the time. But over time, I began to also gather more data. First things first, only I can see him. At work, at the store, everywhere I go, not a single other person has been able to see him. I'm the only one who can touch him, and everyone else seems to conveniently exist around him. Secondly, he doesn't show up in mirrors, reflections, anything like that. So I've begun to think he's more of a ghost, or maybe even a specter of some kind. And maybe I'm just being haunted by the ghost of a clown or something. Any attempts to ask the internet about him have remained fruitless. Nobody seems to know anything about a sunny time crew or cloudy town. Even if he willingly offers up answers to any question I can ask, I can only ask so many questions before I can barely make sense of what he's saying. It's like he came from another planet sometimes. It's usually quite frustrating. But today, it's not so bad. 
because I don't care what he is. Whatever he is, is something that can make me pancakes. And that means pancakes for me that I don't have to make. Honestly, that would be my rationale too. Like, cool. <laughs> there are worse things to be haunted by than a cheerful ghost that is nice to you and cooks you pancakes. Before I know it, I'm up and out of the bathroom, mouth tasting freshly of toothpaste and mouthwash. I really hope he isn't planning on serving pancakes with orange juice. I enter the kitchen, and to my half surprise and half not, there he is, mixing a bowl of pancake batter. The dishes in the sink are neatly stacked, and there's not even a mess. I wonder, if he were to manipulate something in the real world, do other people react to it? Like if he were to pick up a cup, do other people recognize that he picked up the cup and it's just floating in midair? Or does it just like, not even register to their consciousness, you know? Be interesting. He's actually been cleaning up as he cooks. Whatever outlook on life has made him the kind of person who can do that, I wish I had it too. He turns to the stove and ladles out a healthy dollop of batter, speckled with round, plump blueberries. When did I even buy blueberries? He then turns back to me and grins. Look at you, all fresh-faced and starry-eyed. Ready to tackle the day? Absolutely, Jack. Maybe? That was a trick question. No morning is complete without a nice breakfast. Gotta put some fuel in that tank before you can get all revved up. Jack, are you flirting with me? <laughs> he talks so enthusiastically about being healthy. Usually people like this are annoying, but something about the way he does it makes me feel fuzzy inside. And I actually want to do it? It feels attainable and reasonable, and like it comes from a place of genuine concern for my well-being. What is this man? Um, are you okay? Ugh, I jump as I return to the realm of warm fuzzies and back to reality. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm not used to having someone around who cares about that kind of stuff. That's all. His gaze softens. Well, you'd better get used to it, because I'm not going anywhere. And with that, the cakes are plated and breakfast is served. It was only three cakes, but afterwards I'm stuffed to the brim. Jack mentioned something about them being made with love, but I don't see how that equates to them being more filling. It strangely does make sense, though. Clean up is quick, and I help some as thanks for the meal. As I put the last dish away, I stop and glance at the clock on the wall. Wow, is it really only 8.30? Feels like it should be noon. Oh no, do not get me out of bed at before 9 o'clock on a Saturday. You will get bit. <laughs> that would be the beauty of starting the day nice and early dawning on you. I take it all back. I take it all back. I'd rather be haunted by a horrible spirit. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, that was bad. Groan. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I know. But you have to admit, it got at least a little bit of a rise out of you. Oh my god, get out. How do I perform an exorcism? <laughs> That's terrible. You're terrible. Well, you know why they call me Sunny Day Jack? Why? No, but I'm scared to ask any further. Because I've got jokes for days. I've never felt more betrayed in my life. <laughs> Aw, don't be like that. <laughs> I give him a playful shove and we get our giggles out. It all feels so natural and healthy and wholesome. It's like, he's my best friend? Am I really getting attached to this guy? I know I must be going crazy. Still, I say nothing about that as I flop onto the couch. If I can't sleep, then at the very least I'll enjoy some morning vegging out. I turn on the TV and start flipping through channels. I see Jack staring from the doorway wistfully, like a puppy looking for an invitation. I give the seat next to me a pat. I got up and ate your breakfast. Now we get to do something unhealthy as a treat. Well, if I've taught you moderation, I'll consider that my good deed for the day and oblige you. And then, just like that, 
I'm sat next to a retro clown man. Nice. I don't think too much about what's on TV. In the corner of my eyes, he's still there. Still real. Still not a dream. It's weird. But I can't deny that the company is nice. He's nice. Really nice. I find myself compelled further to lean against him. Boop! <laughs> I fall against him awkwardly. He feels like falling into a perfectly me-sized baseball mitt. Hi there, friend. Ooh! Those are definitely some eyes. He's giving me some eyes there. Howdy. He's warm and soft and firm. His shoulders are nice. You getting comfy there? I think so. Maybe. Aw, I didn't know it was cuddle time. Let's make this even comfier, huh? What does that mean? Hmm? He shifts around, and before I know it, I'm lying head on his chest. Oh, wow, okay. I feel myself torn between wanting to freeze up and wanting to melt. I feel so protected. What is this witchcraft? <laughs> he looks down at me with those dark, soft eyes. It, is this okay? It seems like it's okay with... with... us. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. He's so close now. His smile is so sincere. What? Do I have something on my face? He doesn't. I'm looking at all of his face. As weird as it sounds, my mind is loopy with comfort. I feel so protected and cared for. I feel... loved. This is definitely witchcraft. This is definitely some, like, magic voodoo curse shit. Like, he is... doing something. He's worming his way into our mind. I don't know what the intention is yet, but it is definitely not good. <laughs> I want to do... something. Let's make it weird. Ew, gross. Without thinking, I leverage his shirt, pulling on it meekly, and lean in. He seems to have been on the same wavelength because he leans in as well. I'd considered kissing him, but the way he guides me, gently caressing my face and leading me to his soft, waiting lips makes me feel more mentored than anything. All I can do is hold on tighter. I want to be closer, practically less than a single atom away. He's calm and familiar. It feels so right. Th this is gross. That is gross. <laughs> Ew. I feel one hand drift down my forearm, rubbing it slowly and tenderly. It's almost like an affirmation of how sweetly it lingers. The other hand coaxes me, keeping me never too far as we part. Cece? The way he says it sends a surge down my spine. Hung on to him like this, I feel my hips grow heavy against his body. I feel sticky and weighted against him, almost clinging like syrup or ooze. Ew! Are we melding right now? Are we- is he just like absorbing my life essence and it, then he's gonna be corporeal and be a real person again? I bet you. He doesn't let me go, and I feel so relieved when he doesn't. Is that okay? I almost entirely forget I hadn't even asked. I don't know what came over me, but he chuckles and nods. Did it make you feel good? It's somehow even worse with the voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He guides me back to his lips once more, giving me another sweet, albeit brief, kiss. I can feel the twitch of his grin as we part. Then of course it's okay. He says in a soft, low voice. He looks at me with lidded eyes as he almost falls in, tilting my chin up and kissing it. He kissed my chin? I, okay. I feel my lungs fill with hot air. I can't manage to choke out fast enough as he... Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's... Oh, God. I don't like the control his gentle firmness has over me. I adore it. I want whatever's coming next, but I feel out of my mind with the infatuated excitement. Uh-oh. Just 
turn it off? Jack stops. It's my cell phone. I want to break it in half like a chocolate bar when I pull it out of my pocket and see that it's my boss. Yes? Hey there. I have to compose myself before I open my mouth or else I might really hurt his feelings. Yes, sir? I am so sorry to call you like this, but how quickly can you get down here? Not at all. Not quickly at all. I will not be coming in. It's my day off. Absolutely not. What do you mean? Well, Carol just called in sick and nobody's gonna be here if she's gone. And it's a Saturday, so... Well, you know how people are. They're gonna want yogurt on Saturdays. Can you get down here in 30? I have to run some errands today so I can't stay around. No! It's my day off! I want to scream. But I like having money more than I like looking for a job. Yes, sir. Great. Thanks for being a team player. See you then. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we got you breakfast when we did. I feel embarrassed. I feel like I just had my mom walk in on me and my crush. I feel mournful for the lost moment. But all appears not to be lost as I think when Jack takes my hand and kisses my wrist. God, it's so silly, but why do I turn to putty when he does? Mind control. Come on, let's get out there and tackle this day. You won't be alone promise. Right. Right. Nobody can see him. I feel a little better about it all. Thank you, Jack. I... I don't know... What you would do without me? <laughs> yeah. He smiles. Bright as ever, like a best friend I've had for years. That's what I'm here for. Is that what you're here for, Jack? It's full on raining when I get to the front door. Because why not? The clouds must have rolled in earlier, but I hadn't noticed that until I'd gotten outside. And by then it was too late to run all the way back up to my apartment, unlock the door, grab an umbrella, lock the door again, and run back down. I figured if I was fast, I could book it. My job wasn't much more than, what, 10 minutes away? If I ran and stuck to staying beneath the trees and awnings, I'd be okay. I was wrong. <laughs> I was so foolish and wrong. <laughs> I fling open the door to Popov's Big Top Yogurt Topia with enough strength to make a bear envious. Sweet Sanctorium. Huh, <sighs> there you are. I was starting to wonder if you'd ever show up. No, I shouldn't have. I will kill this man. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry, you kind of caught me on my day off, you know? I, uh, I wasn't exactly expecting this. He looks at me deftly, like he can't fathom how that and weather like this would affect my arrival time. Well, you're here now. That's all that matters. Hmm. What a flippant change of tone. <laughs> Why don't you go freshen up and I'll leave you to do your thing. Again, I am so sorry to inconvenience you like this. Oh, I'm sure. I would have loved to give you more of a heads up, but, you know, Carol really should have called me sooner, too. And if you think about it, we're, we're both caught up in this. <laughs> I had to come in on my day off, too, you know. Oh, well. But you're leaving! Somehow, I don't feel like we're on the same level of inconvenience. I reluctantly head into the back, shake myself off, and throw on the garish circus theme apron that completes my employee ensemble. The irony of it all, hallucinating a clown and then going to work dressed like one. At least they don't make you wear the nose anymore, not after an employee had an allergic reaction to the materials they were made of. Rest in peace, Angela. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Before long, I settle into my spot at the counter and my boss heads on out. I smile stiffly. I almost hope he sees how reluctant I am to do so. Mm-hmm. Got it. Bye. He can't leave soon enough. With the tink of the doorbell, he's gone. And then it's just me and the rain. Me, the rain, and Jack. Well, it looks like I'm going to be stuck here for a while. Are you sure you don't like have anything else you'd rather be doing? It feels weird to have him just 
there, standing there and not able to do anything really. I want to feel bad, but what else can I do? Send him home? Have him wait for me there? He perches on the counter next to me cheerfully, though. It washes away some of my worry. And leave you all by yourself? What kind of a friend would I be if I did that? He seems back to his chipper self. His chipper, naive self. Now that the rushing and the rain and all that has passed, I find my mind drifting back to the strangely intimate moment that happened not even an hour earlier. My cheeks begin to burn as I realize and remember. Did that really happen? I think it did. He was so warm, and for a second, maybe more. I needed him. What would have happened if my boss hadn't called? I see him now, looking so kindly and innocent. My blood is hot and cold in my veins at the same time. It's okay, you know. It's okay to what? It's okay to feel that way about someone. You mind reading now is because we mind melded? Because you're absorbing my essence? Feel what way? To like having them around and to want them. It's very normal. Which? Want? Sometimes you'll meet people in your life who are very special to you. And you'll like being around them. And you'll want to be around them a lot. It's nothing to be afraid of. That feeling is called love. Love? He chuckles nonchalantly, like he didn't just drop the L word. Like he didn't just... I feel my chest get tight. I sputter. Dude, you can't just... Wait, do you even know what that word means? Love? Of course I know what love is, silly. Love is when someone in you just fit. It's like having a best friend who you want to be friends with forever. It's special, and it makes you feel good in your heart. That is a very child-friendly way of putting it. But it works. Okay, so you do know. Mm-hmm. Understanding feelings isn't always easy. But that's why I'm here. I can help you understand them. I am not feeling love. No? A absolutely not. And even if I was, what would I be loving? It's not like I'd like... like anybody. You literally just made out with this man 30 minutes ago, and now you're gonna be sitting there and be like, I don't like anybody. Gross. Ew. Boys have cooties. Do you love me? I have to stop myself from being winded by the bluntness of his question. You can't just ask that. Can you just ask that? He just stands there looking cool as a cucumber, looking like he didn't just drop a bomb on me while staring expectantly. What do I even say to that? If you do, it's okay. Love is a good feeling to have. Why wouldn't I want you to feel it? Love is a strong feeling, more like. It's, it's complicated. And it means a lot more than feeling good. It's complicated sometimes, that is true. It's not always easy to understand all at once because of that. You're very smart. I'm glad you understand these things. I trust you if you say that it's not. But if you think it is, you can tell me. I'll be here for you either way. I just want what's best for you. What's best for me? Is this really what's best for me? I almost shudder at the thought. Falling in love with a clown man you've hallucinated? I don't feel like I really deserve that kind of attention, you know? It doesn't feel natural to have somebody just ask you to consider that. But it feels good, too. My phone rings. Today, answering phones as they ring seems to be a dud choice, and I really shouldn't be answering my phone on the clock. 
But then again, I'm alone. And it's freaking storming outside. Who's going to come and eat frozen yogurt at this time of day in this weather? Not a single person, that's who. Jack looks at me expectantly. I just kind of meekly shrug. I should answer this. I mean, I technically shouldn't, but... Hey, it's okay. I'll be right here, okay? He almost seems to be granting me permission again, and I accept once he bequeaths this blessing upon me. I pop into the back room real quick. There's a part of the kitchen where the cameras don't reach and everybody knows about it. Usually it's used for sorting and chopping yogurt toppings or making out with coworkers. <laughs> I'd say a phone call isn't the worst thing that's happened here, so it's probably all right, right? Yellow. Hello? You, you actually picked up. Fuck. My blood runs cold when I realize the Pandora's box I've just opened. Shit. I can't hang up now. Can I? Maybe I can break my phone, throw it on the ground, or crush it with my hands? Stupid. I was so stupid. I was happy and stupid and I completely forgot about him. Ian? Yeah. Yeah. It's... It's me. Shit. Sorry. I haven't heard your voice in so long. Are you okay? I mean... Okay as I can be. I'm fine. I said, you know, like a liar. <laughs> What are you doing calling me right now? I'm at work. You really shouldn't be. I know. I know. I didn't actually think you'd pick up this time. I can hear bell chimes and people in the background. They're muffled, but he's definitely not at home. Where are you? Uh, I'm, I'm at the airport. It's actually why I wanted to talk to you. Consider me lucky, I guess. That you answered, I mean. I didn't actually mean to, you know. I'm not surprised. I'm still mad at you. I know. We can't keep doing this. I, I'm trying to move on. I don't need this in my life right now. Move on? You're moving on? seeing anyone new, are you? That's... that's none of your business, is it? It kind of is. I want it to be. Look, I'm about to fix all of this. I promise. I don't think you really can. I'm going to try anyway. I've known you for how long now? I've known that. This is worse than anything we've been through. And it's 100% my fault. I don't trust this man. He gives me bad vibes. But please, don't throw me out yet. Even if I deserve it. You're what I want. You're all that I want. I'll be there to show you soon. Mm -mm, no, you will not be. No. Bye, Ian. Do not show up. No, 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 no. I need a second. Leaning against the cold stainless steel counter, I feel about to crumble. I was doing so well to forget. Are you okay? No, Jack. Shit. I don't want him to see me like this. I hastily wipe my eyes of all leakage and try to straighten up. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay. You shouldn't lie. It's not good for you. That and... You're also not very good at it either. I'm sorry. <laughs> I stifle a chuckle of my own. It's not a lie. It just hasn't happened yet. Give me a bit. I'll be okay. That seems to make Jack feel a little better. All right, I'll take your word for it. But, you know, I like hearing your truths. They make you 
you. And I'm telling the truth when I say, I'll be here for you whether you're okay or not. I'm not going anywhere. So you keep saying. You can trust me. I don't think that's true. <laughs> the softness in his gaze is almost enough to melt me, but when he caresses my cheek supportively, my heart jumps into my throat. I've felt so bad for so long. I almost feel guilty how he seems to make it all disappear. How I think I... Maybe I might just... No. No, something isn't right about this. I feel for him, but something about this is too good. I won't use him as a bandage to cover up the feelings I don't want to feel. And so soon after Ian. What's wrong? Did I do something? You seem upset. No, oh, you know, just haunted me, came out of my TV, planted yourself in my home, made me talk to myself in public like a crazy person. That's all. <laughs> Jack's hold lingers, even tightening a small bit, but I gently take his hands into mine and away from my face. You're fine. I'm just dealing with a lot right now. I can help you then. Just tell me what you want. What you need. He looks like a kicked puppy now. I hate to rebuff him, especially with how intimate things got earlier. But I haven't heard Ian's voice in so long. I don't feel very good right now. I hear the front door open. Customers, probably. We aren't scheduled for any health inspections that I know of. I shove my phone in my pocket and shake off the dampened mood. No time to feel sorry for myself. Corporate capitalism demands mandatory smiles. When I get out onto the floor, I see three guys idling around the yogurt dispensers. It's three guys. Normal guys. As per company policy, I am duty-bound to greet them. Welcome one, welcome all to Popov's Big Top Yogurtopia. It's so lame. I pray to every, any, and all gods that they are so preoccupied looking at frozen yogurt flavors that they've preemptively tuned me out. I can't talk to Jack when there are people around, lest I look insane, so our conversation is set aside for the moment. Good. Because I need a moment to think. Firstly, the audacity of Ian to call like that. I know he didn't mean it, but I feel tricked. Secondly, after all this time, is this love? Does Jack really make me feel whole all on his own? Or is this just a hallucination too? Is this even real? Do I want to love a hallucination? Would it be so bad? It's not hurting anyone. And he has to be real, right? He made me pancakes. And then we... I feel warm and molt into my core thinking about what it could be like. Nobody seems interested in me right now, and I know I'm not interested in anybody else. He already sleeps with me. That's so weird. <laughs> it's all been harmless up until now. But how deep does this go? How deep could it go? Am I really considering loving a ghost thing? Oh my god, I'm considering it enough to ask if I am. This is so far from where I thought I'd be right now. Hello. Hey, you would get these. Uh, please. I mean... <laughs> One of the guys, the real guys, sets down the last of three cups of frozen yogurt on the scale. Oh, yeah, sure, uh... I get fussing with the register. I weigh them out. I get a piece of plastic, I swipe it, I give it back. And that's the end of that. Thank you. I wave as the customer's friends prepare to leave, but the one guy lingers. You, uh... You work here, right? No. No. I, uh, this is a hobby for me. I, uh, caused a mutiny. All the co-workers are in the back. I pluck at my name tag jokingly. 
Well, I did just ring you up. Cool. Cool. He hums and haws a bit before grabbing his cup and leaving. Weird, but over at least. Hopefully, they'll be the first and last for the day. The rain continues to waterfall outside the windows. Some might even say it was raining cats and dogs. The drum of the downpour is almost soothing in the stock stillness of the empty store. But I'm still on the clock, and that means there's no time to sit in an emotionally cryptic trance. Not when there's walnuts to chop and problems to ignore. So, who's Ian? Who said it's any of your business, Jack? Excuse me? Ian, you mentioned him earlier, right? We were seated on the couch again, work done and over with, and shop closed up for the night. I was tucked into Jack's form once again, polishing off a box of takeout I'd grabbed on my way home. It was a rough day, and contrary to popular media, takeout is actually a treat. <laughs> I don't remember bringing him up with you. Did I? No, we did not. <laughs> Jack doesn't say anything. He looks thoughtful. Maybe even worried? Did I ever tell Jack about Ian? Now that I thought about it, the subject really hadn't come up formally. Which is a bit odd, considering Ian's room remained mostly undisturbed and right across the hall from my own. It was the same as it had always been, minus what he took with him when he moved into a fancy performing arts school in another state. I hadn't been in there since the breakup, but had Jack never wondered either? You seemed really unnerved today. This Ian, he's the one who hurt you today, wasn't he? Um, it depends. Are you going to kill him? Because if you're going to kill him, then no. <laughs> Not hurt. I pushed my food around the box, almost defensive by force of habit. Well, not today. I've never seen you like that. You've always been so happy with me. No. No, that's not always been the case. When he got here, I was a mess. He just came at the right time is all. Remember what I told you? About other people? What do you mean? You're very special, but sometimes... I don't know. I do worry about you. Worry? People like... him. Do you really think he's worth all this pain? What does he provide you to make all this worth it? That's not a simple answer. He never has to hurt you again. I can make sure of it. He's gonna kill him. He's gonna kill him. He's gonna show up at the door and Jack's gonna just stab him in the face. Would you like me to make him go away for you? I feel my spine turn to jelly the way he says it. Maybe my head isn't on right, but he has no idea how nice that sounds. It feels even better as one of his hands begins to firmly grasp and almost massage my shoulder while the other snakes down my arm and takes my hand sweetly into his. I never want to think about these conflicting feelings ever again. Wouldn't it be funny if I could just erase these thoughts? Me and Ian? Walking to school together in the snow? Our first dance? Moving here even. Coming to this place to be together. Only for him to move away to his fancy college and... You don't miss him, do you? Oh, sunshine. He's really fooled you, hasn't he? He promised you the moon and all the stars, and I bet he did it so well. But what did it all amount to in the end? Hallucinating a clown man. He doesn't love you, 
he can't love you. Nobody who can do what he's done to you knows what love even is. How do you know what he did to me? Jack squeezes my hand, punctuating his words with soft affirmation. If he's what's holding you back from being truly happy with someone who loves you, maybe it would just be better if I did something about it. Don't kill him. <laughs> would you like that sunshine? I feel my lungs growing short of air, the way his hot breath feels against my ear and shoulder. I end up having to choke back a huge sigh-like breath, but it comes out more like an audible shudder. It's so warm now. Warm and foggy and hazy. I don't want to think right now. I don't know if I could. I can't help but think. Maybe it would be better if he could just... take control? No. No, he's gonna take my body. He's never gonna give it back. <laughs> The fuck does take control mean? Rise and shine, sleepyhead. Come on, you got work today, you know. I know that's not an ideal way to start the day, but let's get up and get ahead of it anyways. I'm going to try to play dead, I think. <laughs> Maybe if I pretend I'm not alive, he'll give up and let me sleep in. I'll quit my job later. Maybe run away with a circus. It's a great idea, yes. Oh, you're not going to be stubborn about this today, are you? <sighs> First you steal my jacket, now you won't get up so I can at least have it back? What am I going to do with you? His jacket? Oh! Upon closer unconscious inspection, I realize that my blanket is a lot heavier than normal, and it feels like it's made of something plush and satiny. I open my eyes. Sitting on the bed beside me, looming over me like a big dumb sappy tree is Jack. <laughs> he looks down, almost adoringly. My heart flutters as he chuckles. He caresses my cheek gently in the world's worst yet most comforting wake-up barrage. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> I stop to realize that I'm in bed, but I don't actually remember going to bed. All I remember was eating takeout on the couch and then... You dozed off, so I figured I'd help you out a little. I, I hope that was okay. That's not what happened. He took over my body, and he went and murdered Ian, and then he came back and put me in the bed. We're gonna be put in prison for murder. <laughs> I didn't want your back to hurt when you woke up. Couches aren't for sleeping, you know. But you seemed so snuggly with the jacket, I couldn't take it away. You've got quite the grip there. I realize that the jacket, which in hindsight is huge, is draped over me like a shawl. You go ahead, you thirsty animals. I'll wait. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You want it back, right? Only because we have to get you dressed for today. Otherwise, I promise I'm not mean like that. You seemed cold. The jacket is very warm. Sleepy me has good taste. I remove the jacket from my body and return it to him. It's really heavy, so I need to use both arms when handing it over. He puts it on and poses reflectively, his signature piece returned to him once more but he's really bad at keeping a straight face about it. He snickers to himself before giving a little bow. Thank you. He's very polite about the whole affair. I can't help but laugh a little too. But when he extends his hand to take mine, helping me out of bed like it's a pumpkin coach, I feel special and the butterflies kick up again. So? Does he even sleep or does he just stand there watching us until morning? We've got this today, right? Yeah, I don't like that thought. 
His determination is strong, but kind. I... I think I want to follow his lead. Yeah. We've got this. That's the spirit. Let's start off with something to eat and get you ready to go. Double yeah. The walk to work isn't anything particularly special. The weather is nicer, though, and it's not raining. Today actually might be a good day after all. The day goes by pretty quickly. Traffic is somehow less than it was the day before. But I don't complain, because that means plenty of time by myself yet again. Conveniently, no one else seems to have been called in to replace the missing employee who's still out sick. Understaffing sucks. Why do I have to be the one to pick up the slack? So, question. Answer. Go ahead, man. Do you have a favorite flavor? Of yogurt? Yeah. Hmm. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I get this stuff for free. I'm pretty much over it now. Uh, I can see that. Alright, well then if you've had so much of it, that makes you an expert in yogurt, right? Sure. I suppose so, yes. I am the yogurt god. <laughs> okay then, you're the yogurt god. Bow to my creamy awesomeness and quiver in fear at my low-fat, dairy-based content. As well as my non-dairy options, too. <laughs> Jack watches me speechless, obviously in awe. Before he speaks, that is. Hmm, alright. Then let's play a little game. Make me a yogurt using all your yogurt know-how, and let's see how much you've learned about me. If you really wow me, I'll give you a prize. What kind of prize? The best kind of prize is a surprise. <sighs> Get out. <laughs> Fine. I grab a cup. I've got my eyes on this clown. I'll knock his socks off with the world's best cup of yogurt. All right, the world's best cup of yogurt needs yogurt first. What kind am I going with? Let's go with cake batter. This one seems nice and festive and the sprinkles in it remind me of Jack. I think he'll appreciate this one. All right, yogurt is picked out. Now we have to pick a sauce. Let's go with strawberry sauce. It's so pink! And pretty, and probably super full of artificial colors and flavors, but who cares? Everyone knows Froyo isn't healthy anyways. It'll be a nice splash of color for this otherwise decent cup. All right, all that's left are the toppings. Gotta make this count. Obviously sprinkles. Rainbow sprinkles? Is it even Froyo without rainbow sprinkles? Shut up and get in the cup, you tasteless sugar bits. I need you to make this aesthetic AF. <laughs> All right, there we go. One yogurt cup filled to the brim with tasty toppings and creams. All right, there we go. One yogurt cup filled to the brim with tasty toppings and creams. <laughs> Finished. I call back to Jack, who pops around inquisitively. Hey, that looks pretty good. You're quite the chef, huh? Duh. I told you, I am a yogurt god. I believe you, sunshine. Don't worry. Jack spoons around the concoction. He's very careful to keep it in the bowl. All right, I trust you. Let's see how you did. He takes a bite. He seems to roll the yogurt over his tongue thoughtfully, but he doesn't seem elated or even excited. Tell me it's good. Tell me I did a great job. Don't even pretend. So... It, it's interesting. Mm. Mm. I would say it's almost there, but not quite. Don't fucking lie to me, Jack. Get out of my face with that. You know that was a perfect yogurt concoction. 
You know it was. Don't... Don't do that to me. What? Are you kidding me? I'm sorry, but I wouldn't want to lie to you. Maybe somebody else would appreciate it? Maybe not. Oh well. I take the cup and junk it. Better luck next time. I feel cheated. My thoughts are interrupted by a customer at the door. Oh boy, here we go. Welcome one, welcome all to Popov's Big Top Yogurtopia. That's still the worst thing I've ever been paid to do in my life. <laughs> oh. I know. I was here yesterday. Yes, you were. Good to see you. Oh, wait. Yeah, this guy does look familiar. You still work here? Yes. <laughs> I'm here and in uniform, same as last time. Cool. He seems to hover near the counter. He doesn't seem interested in yogurt. I hope he doesn't ask for cookies. I haven't restocked the little shelves today, and... I don't know where the box cutter is. And I don't want to ask. You, uh... Oh. You got a boyfriend? I was hoping it would go back because I started reading it myself, and it wouldn't. My bad. <laughs> I see. This is where this is going. I, uh... What do you mean? You know, like... a boyfriend. Hmm. I don't know whether to be flattered this is happening, or terrified this is happening. I'm gonna go with terrified for now. Well, I mean, I, uh... Shit. Shit. What do I say? What am I supposed to do? You can say yes if you want to. <gasps> I feel like if I say no, Jack is gonna hunt this man down and kill him. So I'll just say yes, Jack. I don't mind, you know. Sure. The way he says it is almost like a whisper in my ear. Uncharacteristically of him, it's like the cherub sweet voice of a devil on my shoulder. Think about it. What this could mean for us. Do you want to say yes? If you want to say yes, you can. It doesn't even have to be a lie. I'll be whatever you want me to be for you. I did promise I'd never leave you, right? I mean, it would be super awkward if I got into a relationship with another person and Jack is just always there. <laughs> I can't even stop to look at Jack. I can't acknowledge him without looking outwardly weird, but he's very much there, standing behind me. Is this a leap I dare to take? Okay, I think I'm gonna save this guy's life. And tell him, I do have a boyfriend. Get out while you still can. It looks like I'm in it, but I can save others from the curse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I will. I lean into my emotions, as small as this may seem. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Sorry. Oh, man. That sucks. He hangs his head a little and just walks off. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he was expecting. I'm proud of you. Oh, God. I feel a soft, firm hand rest around me. Hey, that was a lot. I understand. You did so good, though. You know, admitting your feelings is the first step. It's not always easy. But it's good for you. I Oh, he freaks me out. <laughs> Bad vibes. <laughs> the first step in what, though? The first step in really staying with me. Forever. Oh, yikes. You do want that, don't you? Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I do. So what does this mean? It means... Well, I guess it means that we're really together now, hmm? He smiles innocently. You mean, like, a couple? If you want it, 
We can be. I feel stupid and blushy, the way he cocks his head like a puppy at that sentiment. Oh, wow, this is just really happening. Can I ask you to do something for me? Depends on what it is. Not killing anybody. Can you say it? I'd like to hear you say it, just so I know for real. Is that like how you seal in the curse? Is it like Beauty and the Beast, where she falls in love and then... Except now we're just bound together forever and he takes over my body and he murders people? I love you? Yeah, but for me, if it's okay, you know? He says it's okay to say it. So I guess at this point I might as well. Right? I love you, Jack. <laughs> he softens to the point of looking like he's going to melt. Just like that. Before I know what's what, he leans in and gives me a quick but sweet kiss. It's almost bashful, but it's genuine. And it feels so real against my lips that even after he's pulled away, I can still feel them. He looks away, a bit shy about it all, I figure. You know, maybe this is a bit silly to admit, but some part of me was hoping you felt that way. Nobody will understand what we have, but that's okay. All that matters is how I make your heart feel. It feels good right now, doesn't it? Good is an understatement. I'm nervous and excited and... Who is it? I don't have time to think about it anymore before another customer comes in. Shit. Is it Ian? Welcome one, welcome all to Popoff's Big Top Yogurtopia. I get to doing my job at that point. Out of the corner of my eye, Jack still lingers. There's nothing really left to say. Nothing that can be given the proper attention that it deserves like this, that is. The rest of the day goes by quietly. There's a silent anticipation to pick up the conversation in a more private environment later. I can't help but feel odd when I'm grounded in reality. The things I can see and hear and touch for myself. At the moment, Jack is all that I can see. He's the most real thing there is. But after that, when anything else has my attention, I can see the utter ludicrousness of the situation. Is it intoxicating? Is that what this is? What is this dreamy haze that I find myself consumed by when it comes to him? Magic. And I still don't quite know what he is. No, no, I really shouldn't be giving him this kind of power over me. Why not? If it feels good, then it must be good for you. No! <laughs> so many people walk around so sad and unhappy. You don't want to end up like them, do you? This man's going to take my eyeballs out. He's just going to scoop them out. Someday, you'll know why I'm doing this. But for now, trust me when I say that it's all for you. It's all for you, Damien. I do it because I care about you. This is so weird. <laughs> I never want you to be alone. And have I ever lied to you? I don't know. I get home around 7 at night. The day saw little fanfare overall, but I had to do all of Carol's usual chores. These took a little longer than expected, because she never does them to begin with. I'm dead tired when I get in through the door. Oh god, I want to die. Is it too late to die now? I'm ready for death. Don't say that in front of Jack, he'll probably actually do it. I flop onto the couch with little hesitation or regard for the mass that makes up my body. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. When I look up from the cushion I was mashing my face into, I see Jack knelt next to me. Yep, he's still just as vividly technicolored as ever. Don't shake me. Don't shake me. 
What I'm not ready for is when he actually does yet another thing I had no idea he could do. He scoops me up into his arms and holds me. How do you think he got us into the bed? I mean, obviously he took over our mind and walked into the bed when he was done, you know, murdering people, but I, I don't think we assumed that. So how did she think that he got us from the couch to the bed? Bridal style and all. Wait a second. What? I'm, I'm tired, but I can walk at the very least. I know. I just figured, I know I couldn't really help you do all that much today. This is the least I could do. I'm suspicious. I don't know why, but I'm suspicious. Maybe, even with as nice as he is, I'm not used to the idea of trusting another person enough to let them do this kind of thing. But then again, this is Jack. Sunny day Jack. He's not the kind of guy to just drop you, or hurt you, or throw you, is he? My thoughts are interrupted by a peck on the cheek, courtesy of the blue-haired beau currently holding me. Having you all to myself is nice too. I try not to squirm or squeak as he plants one more kiss on the base of my neck. Jack. What? You don't like it? He doesn't move. He mumbles into my skin. No, it's just... Remember, I can't do anything you don't want me to. What does that mean? What do you mean he, he can't? He kisses upwards slowly and tenderly. My hands grip the collar of his jacket as I attempt to persuade him away. Okay, yeah, I know, but not here. He stops for now, smiling down at me. He doesn't even seem phased by the request. As you wish. Just because he stops kissing, though, doesn't mean he puts me down entirely. Jack carries me, coat and bag and all, to the bedroom. Shit, he's carrying me to the bedroom! <laughs> I try not to let my mind race with all the implications. I fail miserably when I consider the fact he's strong enough to carry me. The way his lips are warm and yet wet against my skin. The way his dark, doe-like eyes look down at me. When we get in through the door, I feel like a steam engine with a boiler fit to burst at the seams. He doesn't turn on the light. I honestly don't mind. The brightness would have blinded me. That's all right, though. Through it all, I've had my own source of sunlight. Oh god, it started. The the personality melding, it started. Oh god, I'm doing it too now. <laughs> hey. Hey. Are you okay? No. Yeah, I'm fine. Good. So... There's silence. It's not awkward or anything but there's anticipation. Jack lays me on the bed, and seeing how in this moment, despite his kindness and his cheery facade, I can't help but back away in awe and intimidation. He's tall, but from this angle, he's tall. Like the gentle giant he is, though, he does stoop down to my level. His expression is empathetic, concerned, but adoring. But the sweetness in his face is accented with his presence as he slides onto bed alongside of me. This is okay, right? Yes. Yeah. I felt the warmth spread through my chest. It bubbled up and rose like lava in a lava lamp before sinking back down into my core. There was something unspoken there between us at that moment. We both knew what was going to happen. It was just a matter of waiting for the first one to break. The red-hot anticipation filled me so much I thought I was going to burst. I was shaking with want, infatuation, need. I didn't think I'd be feeling this anytime soon. So happy. So accepted. But I was cornered now, and I was ready to let whatever this was overtake me. This feeling. It had to be love. Yes. This is love. Stop it. Stop doing that. This is how it feels. This is how I have been feeling for you. He shifts closer to me, holding me in his tight embrace that felt so right. 
don't understand what's happening. Oh, I see. I get it. So comforting. I never wanted to pull away. His kisses felt like sweet sparks of gentleness, and yet, at the same time, a hunger fueled by this intense feeling. I could barely think when we finally pressed our lips together. He was so excited. And it was infectious. I'm so proud of you. You worked so hard for so long. But now you don't have to work hard anymore. The fuck does that mean? The mattress creaks underneath him as he shifts. We can do this together. He's gonna take over. He's taking over. He's taking over. Be together. He means literally. Feeling his full weight on me and our silly little fall made us both laugh. Looking into his eyes, he had the cutest flash of pink spread across his cheeks. What? What is that firmness that I've- Oh no! <laughs> Oops! Jack, uh, not to be rude, but, um, I feel something... hard. Are y you? Oh, yeah, I- I'm sorry, I just got so excited. Loving you made me so happy. <laughs> it does. The voice acting just makes it worse. <laughs> I guess it was difficult to hold back those feelings. My heart practically leapt out of my chest as he kissed me again, but this time with a slight desperateness. I, I want to show you how much I love you. He took my hand and kissed it gently then let it down. Oh god. Such cute sounds you're making. I hate this. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> oh god, okay. You know, you're really so beautiful and so soft. You're so well. No! You were really- It's okay. I want you like this for me. No! I'm so happy that you trust me so much. No! It really means a lot to me that you trust me. No! I love you so much. You surprise me every day with how amazing you are. You're so confident and courageous. I... I want you to. I am so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you. You can hold on to me tight. You're doing so well. <laughs> you really are something special. Sunshine. That was so amazing. You are so amazing. I love you so much. You deserve a good rest. Go on and sleep. Okay. <sighs> yep, that happened. <sighs> he seemed to give an amused chuckle before placing another kiss on my cheek. Don't worry. I'll still be here when you wake up. I promise. I'll never leave you, my love. Just staring at me as I sleep because he doesn't seem I to sleep. I won't ever leave you. His gentle words, I let myself slip off to sleep. My eyelids heavy and my body drained and warned. I never want him to leave. Ever. I was wondering when the psychological horror would start, and boy did they deliver! <laughs> that was... very uncomfortable for me. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, I knew it was gonna be a horror game, but they, 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 they went there. They really went there. Anyways, um, if I decide to do this again, <laughs> I will let you know. I need to. I don't even know. I need to listen to something that's not this. <laughs> like, what, what's a palate cleanser for the ears? That's what I need. I need something like alcohol, but for the ears. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Not like that, but more than I did. <laughs> and I'll see you next time because I am not doing this by myself. <laughs>